Hello, uh, so welcome to uh, this new set of tutorials uh, where I'm going to be covering a load of iPad apps. Um, now if you know my channel you'll know I'm a massive fan of um, hardware, hardware synths, particularly analog synths, but obviously I appreciate not everybody uh, is in a position to be able to uh, get hold of a load of analog synths and so on. So there are some very very good iPad apps out on the market. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so what I thought I'd do is I will go through some of those apps um, kind of on a tutorial basis so you can get the best from them, hopefully. So we're going to start off with uh, this little beast, the uh, the Korg um, IMS20 app, which is uh, a recreation of the MS20, a classic synth. So what I'm going to do in this video is just a quick overview sort of, of the interface um, and how I've got it set up. And then I'll go through all the sections of the synth and show you a few patching examples. Um, in later videos because this is what's called a semi-modular synth because we've got a patch panel here where we can um, patch stuff uh, so let's just go through uh, the layout obviously we've got this bit here is called the control panel and this is the patch panel we can zoom in and out by clicking just here where it says uh, zoom ms20 so if we click on that sorry let's try that one again um, we will get the patch panel no, we won't. We'll get the control panel enlarged. And then down here where it says patch panel, if we click on that, we can get the enlarged view of the patch panel. Um, so that's, that's useful for obviously controlling those dials, etc. etc. Um, I'm actually using a couple of MIDI controllers for this. I'll talk about those in a second when I get onto the. No, actually, we'll do that now. Uh, if we look at this section over here where it says global, if we click on uh, the global, we get uh, this option box will appear. And if we click in the middle, down the bottom here, where it says uh, manual, we get the user manual. There we go. And if we go on to the, over here on the MIDI section, we get um, basically all the MIDI implementation kind of chart thing. Um, there's no MIDI Learn on this app, which is a bit of a shame because MIDI Learn would make life a lot easier. Um, as it is, you've got to use these um, that basically all the MIDI controls are hardwired. Uh, so for example, if you want to map, say, the portamento to a dial on a MIDI controller, you need to set your dial on your MIDI controller to CC number five and so on. So uh, I'm using the MPK Mini, the Akai MPK Mini, the original one. Um, so what I've done is I've basically just gone into the editor um, on that uh, and changed the dials because I, for example, I've got the top one of the dials is controlling the, uh, uh, modulation generator this one so I've mapped that first dial to CC channel 76 and so on I might do it if, if people are kind of getting a bit confused on that I will do a, a separate video showing you how I've done that um, if we scroll down because I'm also using a, a nano control and these actually work quite well because obviously they're made by Korg and they're all pre-mapped for you so you can see hopefully on here um, you've got kind of two scenes, you can be in synth uh, mode or mixer mode, so in synth mode everything is hard mapped to kind of like the most useful uh, controls, which is very useful. So I'm sort of using the most of the mapping from the, the nano control with the MPK, mostly for the, the keyboard, but with some of the extra controls on there as well. Um, so. We'll come out of that, we'll go back into the uh, normal the uh, user interface. So I was going to go just along the top, obviously we've got your keyboard here, you've got a mod wheel here, and the moment, what's called the momentary switch here. If you sort of place your finger here on the app and drag down, we get access to the step sequencer. So I was going to get rid of that. <coughs> um, and then, so let's just go through all the sections. This section here, is our session which is kind of like our song so you've got uh, where, where you would save all your sessions and there are some templates that you can load in uh, where you can so just get back to the main screen so you've got browse and save and you can name it etc there okay so then we've got the playback section which can be in either song mode or pattern mode depending on where this uh, switch is uh, so i'm just going to switch it over into pattern mode and if we click on here that's our play button that will play whatever patterns we've got uh, loaded in um, and you can view you can have up to 16 patterns as you can see here and then if we switch over to song mode and then if we go over uh, to the uh, song edit section which is here and just click on that 
we then get our song section. Again, don't worry about how all these work. I'm going to go through all this in later videos, but then we can have different patterns and we can step up. I think there's about, uh, let me see, because if we drag along, you can have up to 256, I think that is, uh, different steps in your uh, song, which is more than enough. So this could be like pattern, well, you can see here, we're going to play pattern one, four times it's then going to play pattern nine to the three times then pattern two then pattern three and so on so that's how you build up your song basically because uh, it's got quite a useful sort of synthesizer engine in there as well um we've got the components here so yeah we've got synth which is obviously the main screen that you're going to use a lot song and pattern mode we've just had a look at we've got a drums section uh, which is a 16 step sequencer for each of the drum parts. So we've got six drum parts and you can also assign these to synth bits as well. They don't have to all be on drums. Um, so that's, that's quite a useful uh, way of extending if you want to have, you know, drum, not all the six drum parts and some of the, uh, uh, use some of those as synths. That is absolutely fine. Uh, we've then got the mixer mode. So we've got channel for the synth, and then we've got the six drum channels here. So obviously we've got usual things you get in a mix. So we've got mute, solo, volume, pan. We've got effects that we can add in here. Uh, let's just switch back to the synth mode. Uh, we've got the synth edit. So the zoom we've had a look at, uh, which will zoom in onto these two parts. We've got just here an effect section um, where there's lots of different effects that we can have in there so we've got eq and delays and reverbs and you can switch that on and off with this button and then you control the effects with those two dials just there um we've then got the sound preset um where we can audition our sounds from here so let's say we want to audition i don't know bass five you can bring up the keyboard by tapping down here and then as you play on the keyboard you would uh, audition that sound you can also do the same thing if we click here with the chaos pads because we also get chaos pad control which is very useful um, okay so you can audition your sounds and then you can load them in from there um, so actually presets where you browse and save everything and then we've got the controllers which is keyboard here so we can have uh, thick keys that are set on at the moment we can have normal keys by clicking on these buttons here um, uh, sorry i'll just uh, unplug my headphones by mistake uh, so yeah you got normal size keys and then you can have uh, thinner size keys uh, on the end i generally leave it on on thick if i'm using the ipad but most of the time i will use the um a uh, midi controller anyway um let me just get back to actually that'll do um so then we've got the chaos pad control as well so here we've got kind of like on this side would give us sort of a step sequencer kind of um sorry an arpeggiator kind of thing over on this side and then you've got volume and panning over this side but you can also change uh if we go on settings which is this button here you can uh change any of the parameters available to you onto these chaos pads which again is also very useful um controllers there global we've had a quick look at utility is basically just there uh, that that becomes available when there's certain things available on here which we'll look at as and when that bit comes up um, so that is sort of a quick overview of the um, the user interface um, so it does it you know it does sound pretty cool um, so that's just me just mess, messing about with the filter so I'm trying to kind of record this off a weird kind of uh, screen casting thing which seems to be a little bit laggy today but uh, it kind of does the job so hopefully it'll be all right so you can get some very very nice fat sounds out of it it's not a free app it does cost a bit i'm not sure exactly the current cost i'll try and check that out and put that in the description but it's a hell of a lot cheaper than um buying well the original ms20 or they're between like a thousand and two thousand i think going on ebay now there is the ms20 mini that was reissued a few years ago but minimum of those you're looking at 
350 to 400 500 quid um, so for the cost of an app uh, if you've already got an iPad it's quite a useful way of getting into the world of an MS-20 and it's great fun with the patch panel you can do lots of stuff with it uh, so hopefully that was of some interest on just the um, kind of a bit on the overview um, and I'll stop pressing those buttons because that's probably getting annoying now so on future videos then on the next one I uh, will look at sort of the uh, the oscillator section let me just close down the keyboard just so you can see that bit um, oh no didn't press it properly there we go um, so yeah we'll look at, at basically this section first of all so that will be in the next part which is going to be uh, looking at the different uh, oscillators that we've got and then we'll go through everything else in the step sequencer in future videos so hopefully that was of some use to you and some interest and uh, stay tuned for future videos so if you uh, want to subscribe to the channel so you get notifications of when they come on uh, then feel free to do so and if you like the video please like it if you didn't like it um, don't dislike it because that annoys me <laughs> now everyone's going to go and dislike it but uh, you know if you don't like it don't watch it at the end of the day um sorry i have to have one of those rants every now and then on my videos as you will know if you've watched some of my previous ones um and yeah you can check my music out as well on spotify and itunes and all those kind of places so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next part cheers <laughs>